Hello! In today's video, we will discuss pressure sensors used in gearboxes, for example, the DQ381 and DQ500 models from the Bosch company. What happens to them? And why did they initially have such a serial defect? Join us for the presentation. Here we have a typical sensor used, for example, in the DQ250 gearbox. How is it constructed? All electronics are enclosed in a plastic basket sealed with an O-ring, which over time allows oil to pass through to the controller. Then there is a porcelain plate composed of two layers. One layer is about two tenths millimeters thick, where resistors are sprayed. Oil pressure enters here and bends the porcelain plate. This in turn changes the resistance. This information about the resistance change goes to a simple processor, which later calculates and sends a voltage signal directly to the gearbox controller. What is the disadvantage of this sensor? Firstly, over time, the seal starts to allow oil to pass through, as I mentioned. Secondly, since it is a resistor, it is not resistant to temperature changes. These are piezo-resistive factors, so if the medium, that is oil, reaches here at a temperature of 100 degrees, the output from this sensor will be different than at 20 degrees, and this deviation needs to be compensated in the gearbox software. Here we have an example of a Bosch sensor, for instance, installed in DQ381 and DQ500 gearboxes. What is the difference from the predecessor? Oil enters directly through a small glass square to the pressure calculating system. What is the advantage here? The resistive system has been eliminated, so at 100 degrees, the pressure is the same as at 20. There is no need to compensate for this resistance. However, what is the disadvantage and why do these sensors show a negative? Because there is a problem with sticking or connecting and deforming these materials. That is, the system to this glass or another material square through which the medium, that is, oil, flows. Some physical distortion occurs, causing these sensors to go negative. Unfortunately, from the level of these sensor connections, the processor cannot be calibrated or zeroed because it has some program embedded in it, so the sensor needs to be replaced. Now I will tell you about the sensor generations that Bosch has already used for these controllers. This is the first generation sensor available for sale today. You need to be careful. What characterizes it? Black epoxy glue on top. Original Bosch. Production from 2016 onwards with a serial defect. The second supposedly improved sensor has a different back cover, that is, the second generation. Also, all the inscriptions are original from Bosch without a QR code. This was around 2018. The last production, and we use these for repairs, with a QR code. You can decrypt the production date with a generator from the website. And the original Bosch inscription. We use these sensors to repair your controllers. There are also Chinese sensors on the market with a different shape. Well, they work for about two, three months. I'm happy to give them away for free if someone wants them. I have a few pieces. And the latest release I saw is almost a counterfeit one-to-one -one with the original Bosch generation, only with a different inscription here.
and it doesn't have the Bosch logo, but it has a QR code and looks the same from the top. I haven't tested this sensor, so I won't comment on it. I hope I've brought you closer to the work of these sensors and the principles of their operation, as well as what you need to pay attention to when handing over your controller for repair. Stay tuned for more updates from our company.